Some call it an excuse for failure. Other claim it's the, the other claim they're telling the truth that nobody has the courage to say out loud. The debate remain. Can we state that the system is rigged? When someone else has the promotion that we wanted, are we wondering if he or she has some kind of backing, some pushing? When our preferred hockey team has not made the Stanley Cup for, won the Stanley Cup for the last 50 years or even participate in the playoff for the last 12, are we wondering if the NHL are not favoring uh, American teams to sell uh, their product down the border. When a candidate looks at disastrous polls or is about to lose a selection by a landslide, can, we rep can he repeat over and again that the whole political system is rigged? Let's be serious. Is the system rigged here in Canada? In short, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. And I know it's hard to believe, it's hard to accept. We don't want to hear this. It makes us uncomfortable. We, because we're convinced that we live in an egalitarian society. We believe that everyone is, who is working hard has the same chance to succeed. However, when we look at hard data, we're forced to acknowledge that middle-aged, white, heterosexual men like me do not face the same challenges than other groups in our society. Just for example, after many educational campaign and a few legislative initiatives, women in Canada still today earn approximately 20% less than men for the same or similar jobs. If First Nation represent a little more than 4% of the total population of Canada, well, why 25% of men sentenced to provincial and territorial custody are Indigenous? In Toronto, in Vancouver, more than half of those living in poverty are from racialized groups. And we like to believe that in Canada we're not plagued by racism, but we have to look the reality in face. Another example, in 2006, not, not 1906, 2006, a friend of my wife moved from Toronto to Kingston and he's black, she's Ojibwa, and when they were looking in the city of Kingston, Ontario, a daycare center for their two sons, well, they were saying, you kind of arrive a little too late, uh, we were all full, uh, we can put you on a waiting list. But when they learned that he was a university professor at Queen's University, well, they could do something about those waiting lists. They could squeeze a place. That was, that was place after all for their sons. You know, this white man never faced this sort of problem because like it or not, our system is designed for people like me. And unfortunately, living in a system rigged in favor of some it's not a new reality. Oh, no. Jesus' parable of the widow and the unjust judge in the Gospel according to Luke is a perfect illustration of this. As you can guess, we have two main characters in the story. The first one is this judge who, as the story says, neither fear God nor add respect for people. This man is in a position of power and prestige is part of what we call today the establishment. It represents also all that is broken in our world, like the powerful who ignore the consequences of their decisions and actions. The judge does not have to care about the common people because it's beyond them. Nobody, nobody can touch or threat him. 
<laughs> not this poor widow that is the second character of her parable. And from what we can understand, this widow is not very different from the other destitute members of her society who are, have very limited resources, uh, don't have a network of influence, don't have enough money to put in a brown envelope and to slip it to someone. We have to work around the angle and the edges of society because its very structure is stacked against them. However, this unrespected widow keeps coming to the judge saying, grant me justice against my opponent. And restlessly, she bothers him like a noisance that would not go until she ends up receiving the justice she demands. <clears throat> and as people of faith, systematic injustice like this and human misery really gets under our skin. To witness God's intention for every human being to be trampled with impunity, offense, every fiber of our body and our souls. We are frustrated by the brokenness of our society. And as people of faith, we start to complain, not because we are naturally grumpy individuals, no, but because we believe a better world is possible. We cannot accept that cruel exploitation and arbitrary abuse of power is normal. We cannot accept that God's mercy, love, and compassion is not offered to all without exception. We cannot accept that this mess that surrounds us is the best that we can do. As people of faith, we are called to refuse the status quo. We cannot remain passive in our living room, hoping that someday in the future it will be better, that there's some sort of divine justice that will reward us in the afterlife. No, we look around us and we found where and, and when we can get involved in our neighborhood, in our country, or, or, or overseas. We roll up our sleeves and we commit to bring better things into being. We look for alternative. We work for change. We transform hopes into realities. As people of faith, we aim to build supportive communities where all could come when life is too difficult, where all who, are, who is tired to carry his or her old world on their shoulder can rest a little where despair is seen as the only option and they want to find another one. We want to remind to everyone that they're not alone. And fate, hope, dignity are always possible. So we get involved in our world by using the resource and the gifts at our disposal. In the case of the widow, in her parable, our greatest gifts, our greatest assets, assets was our, is our stubbornness. <laughs> yes, I understand it might seem strange. Being stubborn is not always considered as something positive. And yet, the widow used this character trait of hers to fight against the bias and unyielding system. Her strength, her tenacity, her unflinching willingness to complain days in and days out, challenge the judge and eventually brings restoration. And we can only say good on her. The determination of people like her shed lights light on obscure parts of our world and move things until justice and dignity becomes a reality for all. And the widow in our story is not just a unique character or one of a kind. 
we all have gifts, we all have abilities, tools at our disposal that we can use. Some of us are very stubborn and we know who we are. <laughs> and we're not afraid to confront those who abuse their power and are taking decisions contrarily to the benefit of all. Well, others are good with words and can craft very precise petition and very moving open letter to raise awareness against some of our policies surrounding us. Some are burning with passion and are always ready to organize protest march and public demonstration against damaging policies. Some have time, yes, time. And they have time to sit down with those who are marginalized and the outcasts of our society around a simple cup of tea or, coffee, uh, tea or coffee and they can listen to them. Some have financial means and they offer, they offer them to support advocacy groups or help those who are depending on food banks. Some have this reckless love that allows them to welcome those who have fail on so many times and would like to try again one more time. We use the tools and, <clears throat> sorry, the gifts at our disposal not necessarily to brag, to feel good about ourselves or to increase the membership in our church. We use them because we believe we can contribute to the inbreaking of the kingdom of God right here, right now. We believe we can make a difference, even if it makes time, even if we don't perceive change right away, even if we look foolish when we do so. We do whatever it takes to get the system to move, even if it's a little. The parable does not tell us how many times the widow went to the judge. Is it 10? Is it 35? Is it 300 times? We don't know. We just know that she does not give up because the alternative would be misery, unfairness, and inequity. She remained persistent despite all the obstacles on her road because it is for her the right thing to do for her and also for us. The parable of the widow and the unjust judge is a call for justice and dignity for all. As people of faith, we cannot remain inactive when many of our sisters and brothers are denied basic human rights and minimal living conditions. We need to live justly and also to de denounce evil we need to demand response from the wider society and its leaders. We need to make a complaint loud and persistent enough until the system stops to be rigged again, some of us. Amen. <laughs>